Guys, so I'm just gonna read y'all a story real quick. Um, I know this is um, not really the schedule that I'm really on right now, but it doesn't really matter to me. I just wanna read the story. Um, and to what I wanna say before I read this is that sometimes God will put us in a position um, that is hard, but the outcome will be great. So sometimes we will go through suffering so that somebody else can be saved. Um, and this is exactly what happens in Acts 16. So this is what it says. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who, bought, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many, many days. So this girl was following her around. They were following Paul and um, Silas around. And she was proclaiming um, that they were servants of the great, uh, most high God. And this wasn't true, but the thing is, is that the spirit was trying to, um, so spirits will always come as an angel of light. So she was a fortune teller. So if she could, she could like follow, like, cause they already believed that she was the power of God. It says this in Acts 13. If people are not Acts 13, Acts um, eight or nine, um, they believe that this, and I've seen this on psychic advertisements. They try to ad they try to advertise like they're they get their power from God, and this is what they do every time. So she was trying to trick them into thinking that her fortune telling was from God, and to trap other people into coming and getting fortune telling. That's a whole different lesson. And that's a Python spirit, a spirit of divination. That's a Python spirit, and that's a translation. You can go look at that. But it says Paul greatly annoyed turned her and said to the spirit, "I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her." And he came out. And he came out that very hour. He said, he came out. And this, the spirit was a he. And it said, came out that very hour. So people that think that Jesus, like, and Paul just casted out spirits in like 30 seconds. That's not true. It says, within the hour. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ and come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. And when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged him into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach our customs, which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to deceive or observe. So these, these her masters were annoyed because she could no longer make them any money because she was out of her bondage now. So in bondage, they made money off of her because she had a spirit of divination. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. So they tore off Paul... And Silas's clothes. And they beat him. They beat him. And when they laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison. So they beat them several times. They beat them probably 39. They, like, they hit them 39 times. 40 minus, I think it was 39. Because 40 would kill a man. So they would just get to them to the point of death. Just to the point of death. And then they would throw them into prison. They did this uh, to Jesus as well. And this happened to Paul multiple times. Um, so he was beat for the gospel, but now we can't even get on the internet and preach. Hallelujah. <laughs> Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the socks. So they were just beaten, right? They're just beaten, right? But this is what it says. So through this, God is going to do something. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. So they were just got beaten. And now they're singing hymns to God. I wish, Lord, make me that tough, Lord, make me that tough. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. So God sent an earthquake and shook the prison. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. So all the doors opened. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do not harm yourself. Do yourself no harm for we are all here. And then he called for light ran in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So through this, through this beating and imprisonment, this guy just got saved. He just like, he fell on his knees after just trying to kill himself. And he said, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. And believe in means to trust in. It's not just believing in the name of Jesus. You can all believe in Jesus. You can all say you believe in something, but when you trust in him, it's different. Then they spoke of the word of the Lord to him and to all were in the house. And then he took them to the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. 
Immediately he, he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, or he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. So through this beating and this imprisonment, this guy and his whole family and everybody got to hear the gospel through this beating. So sometimes we have to go through a beating so that others can be saved. That's the moral of the story. Sometimes we have to go through a beating as servants of Christ so that others can be free. See, they were in prison, but they said, sometimes we're put into prison so that others, other prisoners can be set free. See, we're already set free, but God sent them into a prison to set the, the ones that were in prison that were already in prison in their own. They were already slaves to sin. So he sent Paul and Silas after just getting beat 39 times with lashes, 39 lashes up to the point of death. And he sent them into the prison so this guy and his family could be saved. We have to be tough. We have to, we have to endure suffering so others can be saved. See, we're saved. We can endure. We have to keep our eyes on the end of the road. And sometimes it's really hard. And sometimes we see Paul and Silas, they probably had no idea what was going on. They're like, wow, we just got sent in prison, but I know God is faithful. I know God is faithful. They were just doing what, they were just going, trying to go to prayer. They were just literally trying to go to prayer and this divination spirit was just following them around. But you know what? God saved the family, an entire family. It says that now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced. And immediately, um, sorry, I have to go back a verse. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. He just saved an entire family. An entire family just got saved through this beating and this imprisonment and this earthquake. See, when God sends us into prison, he has a plan. God always sends an earthquake and shakes up everything. And sometimes we, we just have to keep singing and praising him because he's going to make a way when there's no way. See, Paul and Silas could have never predicted that earthquake, but I know, I know my God is faithful. I know whom I've put my trust in. Lord, I want to be that tough. I want to be Paul and Silas tough. I want to be that tough. Lord, I want to, not that I want to get beat, but Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. But it's time to start getting up after our beating. We have to, sometimes we have to go into the beating because others can be saved. Praise the Lord. I hope you have a great day.